Hello everyone, welcome to the second episode of my base body build and uh, in this episode I will go through the features of the base body and explain how it works. Uh, the base body is a sequencer that's, that is uh, tailor-made for uh, Eric Yassin's uh, baseline DIY and um, it can hold up to 10 patterns uh, where each pattern uh, can be up to uh, 16 steps so it's quite a simple uh, sequencer if we look at the user interface we have this uh, OLED display here and we have an encoder wheel uh, for data input and for selecting by, by pushing one edit and one menu button uh, apart from that, we have the clock input and the reset input that is uh, used to drive the sequencer. And on the output side, we have a gate output, we have one volt per octave output, we have an accent output, and we also have a VCF CV output. And uh, as you can see, uh, right now nothing is happening. And that is because we don't have any clock uh, signal yet. So uh, let's hook up this uh, LFO as a clock source and uh, here you can see that the sequence starts to, uh, to step and if you look at the display you see that the first step in a pattern is marked with a sort of uh, um, black on white background so it's easy to see when, when the pattern starts and uh, we also have a small area here where you can see that the, the pattern selected right now is uh, zero from this sort of uh, rolling tracker like interface you can see that th there's no nothing uh, this is an empty pattern with uh, all the steps are, are empty and to get this uh, going first of all we need to connect uh, gate and one volt per octave so let's start by doing that like so and now we have a sort of minimum setup where we can uh, program notes in, uh, in the sequencer and it will play it uh, on the baseline all right so let's first first uh, look at uh, the pattern edit uh, button over here if I press that then I can uh, the display changes and I can select which step that I'm, I want to edit. And as, as you can see here, we have uh, a pattern with uh, 16 steps. So let's start with the first one. And uh, you enter the edit mode by, by pressing that one. And uh, as you can see, the, there are uh, three dashes and that means that that is a rest. There, there is no... Uh, there is no note selected yet, so let's uh, let's do that by pressing the button again to select that uh, item. And then now we have a first we have a C in in the first uh, step. And uh, we can sort of commit to this uh, note by pressing uh, the button once more and now it's stored and if you want to exit out of this menu uh, then you press the edit button again and then you will get back to the step selection menu and if you enter uh, edit again then you will sort of exit back to the to the pattern play menu Okay, so we have uh, <laughs> created one note so far. So as you can uh, understand, this is uh, um, sort of... Uh, this takes a while to, to, uh, to enter all the notes and after a while you get more used to it and then you can work faster. But uh, in the beginning it's a little bit tedious to do all the menu diving and, and stuff like that, but yeah. That's, uh, that's one of the uh, trade-offs, uh, because I wanted to keep the user interface as simple as possible. And uh, 
to, to keep the size of the module small. All right, let's uh, dive into the edit menu again. And uh, let's say that we want to add another note. Uh, kind of makes sense. Then we do it like this. Okay. And uh, all the, the parameters that you can edit in one uh, step is the, of course, the pitch, uh, the note. And there is also a tie um, parameter that means that the, the, if I turn this on, uh, it will tie to the next step. So, uh, uh, so it's possible to have um, longer notes than, than, than 16th notes. And uh, so, but uh, one of the drawbacks with the baseline is that uh, it doesn't support sustain. So uh, it doesn't actually do anything for for a baseline, but it, it can. This can be very useful if you if you have a um, if you let's say that you build up a, a base uh, voice uh, in your modeler and you have an, an, a sustain uh, in your envelope, then then this is useful, of course. All right. Uh, let's say that we want to go to the next one, and that is the accent. And uh, if we want to turn that off, of course, we need to hook up the, the accent connection to the, to the baseline. And uh, next one, we can, the next one is slide. And that is, uh, yeah, sort of um, portamental slide between notes. Uh, and uh, so you can turn that on and off for, for every step. And the final parameter is VCF, and that is the VCF CV out. And if we are going to use that, then we need to hook this up, like so. All right, so now we have everything connected, uh, basically, except for the the reset input. But um, the, the reset input works like uh, it's, it goes back to, to the first step in a pattern. Um, if, we, if we have a low to high transition, so on, on a positive edge of, of the reset signal, uh, it will make the, the, the reset. All right. Uh, let's say that we are uh, happy with this for now, um, and we want to add another note. Like that. And we would like to have a slide function from the previous note to this one. Now we go back, go down into the slide parameter, turn that off, and now we can hear. You can hear the slide between the second and the third note here. Okay. Let's add a couple of more notes. Okay, we will add a couple of uh, C's like that. 
And let's add uh, an accent on this one. There you can hear the accent with uh, the filter is opening up a little bit and uh, the envelope is also affected a bit so it's... And you might ask yourself, okay, now let's say that I have done a couple of patterns. How do I change between patterns uh, during a live performance? And uh, I have implemented this like you press the data button like this. And then you can twist the, uh, the data wheel like that. And then it will finish the ongoing uh, pattern. And after that it will change to the next one. So now we have changed to pattern 2. Okay, so the easiest way of showing the VCF uh, control is to actually have the same pattern. Uh, so this is with, without, without any uh, uh, CV uh, uh, on. And this one is with a full VCF uh, output. And uh, as, you, as you can hear, it's uh, quite a subtle um, change, so it's not... Uh, so uh, pronounced. Okay, so let's uh, look what's behind the menu button here. Uh, if we press that, we enter the system menu, and first we have a uh, new pattern or uh, erasing a pattern. So you uh, press that, and then you select which pattern you want to erase, and then you can select the number of steps you want for that pattern. So you can go between three and, and sixteen. And if you want to bail out of this uh, menu, uh, then you press the menu and then you will go back to... And if you press menu one more, once more, then you back to the sort of play mode again. Alright, so first we have the new and uh, second one we have save, where you, can, where you save all your patterns into a non-volatile memory. And... Um, and that saves everything, so it's, this is just a reminder that uh, you will uh, overwrite all the patterns um, if you press that button. And, um, sorry, the, the second, third one is a load, where you, if you want to uh, call back uh, the stored uh, patterns, then you can use this. Uh, and it will load all patterns, of course. Okay, so next one is tune. And uh, that is uh, so you can tune your, uh, your VCO. And if we press that, then we will go into tune mode. And we also have something called VREF. And uh, this is uh, a bit interesting to mention because the, the base body uses a digital to analog converter that is, uh, doesn't have an internal voltage reference for the output. So it relies on the 5 volts that you are using in the system. And uh, so what you have to do is basically calibrate the base body to 5 volt uh, level that you have in your case. So you have to measure that. And uh, I have done some measurement and we can see that I came up with 4.83 um, volts in, in this uh, case. Uh, so I had to measure it with a multimeter. So uh, I will show how this is done. And I will also after that I will showcase the, the tune menu as well. First step is to measure the plus 5 volt rail in the case to get a reasonable starting value for VREF. 
The second step is to connect the 1 volt per octave output from the base body to a multimeter to see how well it tracks across octaves. See link in the description for a table with the output voltages for each note. As we can see here, the output voltage is a little bit high, so we will have to trick the base body to reduce the tracking gain a bit by increasing the VREF value. After that we check the tracking gain again, and it seems to have improved a bit. Finally, we hook the 1 volt per octave output back into the baseline DIY again and connect the chromatic tuner. By checking the whole scale, we see that the tuning is not 100% perfect on all notes, but the overall tracking seems acceptable since C0 and C4 are in tune. Thank you for watching. In the next episode I will talk a little about some improvements that I am working on and possible new features that I want to add to the software. So stay tuned for that and see you soon again. Bye.